This is Mike with Introduction to Visual Basic. In this example, I want to show you some stuff about picture boxes, how radio buttons and check boxes can interact with picture boxes. So I'm going to get my example here under Chapter 2 Examples. And let's download it. So I'm going to right click on Chapter 2 and say Save Link As. And I've got a folder on my desktop I already created called ITSE 1331, which is this class. And I'm going to go into Chapter 2 and save this compressed file, you see it's a zip, into that folder. Now that I've done that, I'm going to minimize here. Here's my ITSE 1331, Chapter 2. Here is the compressed example and some pictures we're going to play with. I'm going to right click on this zip and say Extract All. Let it run. Once again, anytime you've worked with these examples, once you've extracted them, see here's the extracted folder, now I can delete the zip file. If I try to open this example from the zip file, it will not work. So I'm going to delete this sucker, send it away to the bit bucket. Now I can go into this example and drill down until I get to the Microsoft Visual Studio solution. Double click on that. That's going to launch Visual Studio. If you're running this from a network drive, you're going to get this pop up. And it's kind of funny because Microsoft doesn't trust Microsoft networks. I'll say OK because everything really is fine. Now it's loaded my project. Over here in my Solution Explorer, I can see the form. I'm going to double click on it to open it up. And this is a program that you've seen in the videos. And the functionality, let's run it real quick. It just lets whatever you type into this text box go into the label and then changes the color. We're going to add some stuff with this picture box right here. So I'm going to kill the program. And if I click on this picture box, and you see it's got a pretty boring name. It's just picture box one. So let's call it, uh, let's call it, display picture box and right now it's got a picture in it and the way that picture got added it says don't panic which you should not be panicking in this class by the way is I need to go down to the property window and go to the image property and if I hit this dot 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 right here I can load an image from importing it from my local hard drive so I'll say import and where did I put those pictures? Uh, once again, that was you know on my desktop, 1331, Chapter 2. And I had imported this Don't Panic picture already. So this time, I want to import coffee, the coffee picture. So now, and I, whenever you do this, you don't ever want to do a local resource. You want to do a project resource. I'm going to say OK. And now if I come over. Back to my Solution Explorer, you'll see under Resources, I have Coffee and I have Don't Panic. Now, for the purposes of this example, I want to have four pictures. So I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to click on the picture box. I'm going to go back to its image property, hit the dot, 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 say Import. This time I'm going to get Books. Then I'm going to hit Go back to image property. Oh, we got to hit OK. Go back to image property. Say import. I've gotten books. I've gotten coffee. Let's get music. Say open. OK. Hit my dot 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 for the image property again. Import. This time let's get periodicals. I'm going to say open. OK. Now you see I have added those pictures to my resources. Now what we want to make happen is we're going to add some radio buttons so that as the user clicks on each radio button it's going to change the picture in the picture box. Let's make things just a little bit bigger here. I'm going to move my picture box. Oh, let's make this label a little close, little smaller. Yeah, this is starting to look good. That's a good size for my picture box. I'm going to put the four radio buttons right here for changing the picture. So I need to come over to my toolbox and add four radio buttons. So one, two, I'm double clicking. Now I've got my four radio buttons. Let me drag them down, move them around, make everything look 
Very nice. You get them all spaced the same. Pretty much. Now their names are not good because when they click on this first radio button, we I want to make the coffee picture appear. Okay? So I don't want to call it radio button one. I don't want its text property to be radio button one. So I'm gonna remember anytime you add controls to your form, the first thing you want to do is change the name property. So I'm gonna click on radio button one, scroll up in my properties box, and you see it's called radio button one. I'm gonna call it coffee radio button. Press enter. I'm going to click on the next radio button. I don't want to call it radio button 2. Let's call it book radio button. Getting the idea? I'm going to go to the third radio button. Take the 3 off the end of the name. Let's call it music radio button. Going to go to the fourth radio button. Take the 4 off of it. And I want to call it periodicals. See if I spelled that right. Periodicals, radio button. Now I've got them named. Now I'm going to go back up to the top and now I'm going to change the text property. That's what the user sees. So I don't want the text property of the first radio button to be radio button one. It's going to be coffee, right? Let's see. Its name property is radio coffee radio button. So we're going to put coffee in the text property. If I click on the second radio button, it is going to be books. I'm going to make its text property books. The third radio button is going to be music. And the fourth radio button is going to be periodicals. So let me get that selected. Okay, now I've got them all named. They're all sitting there by themselves. They don't need to be in a separate group. I can put them in a group box to make them look nice because I've got colors in a group box. Let's do that real quick. I'm going to go to containers, grab a group box. Let me just rubber band it out real quick. Move it out of the way for a second. Grab these four and put them in my group box. Now I can put my group box by grabbing its move icon over here. And we don't want the text property of this group box to be group box one. I'm going to call it pictures. So now we're looking good. Now we got to write some code so that when the user clicks on coffee, it changes to the coffee picture. So remember that we named this picture box display picture box because we're going to need that in our code window. So I'm going to double click on coffee. I have the empty procedure for coffee. It's going to be, I'm going to write display picture box. There it is right there. I can just hit spacebar now. Dot image equals, now here's the part you got to know, my dot resources dot coffee. So what we're saying is when the user clicks on this, go to the resources, get the coffee picture, put it into the image property of the picture box. That's that's what we're going to do for all four of these. So because we're going to do that, I'm going to I'm going to copy this. Let's go back to my form designer, double click on books, paste that in, but this time we don't want to put coffee in, we want to put dot books or dot book, excuse me. Go back to Form Designer, Music. Going to paste that in again, but this time we're going to do the music picture. And last but not least, Periodicals. I'm going to paste that in. Now you can paste with Control V. That's what I was doing earlier. There I right clicked. Periodicals. Okay, now the moment of truth. Let's run the program see what happens here. So if I click on coffee, you get the coffee picture, books, music, periodicals. So that's how you can use radio buttons to change the picture in a picture box because we put all these pictures in the resources because we imported them. Now I want to show you one more thing with this. We're going to add a checkbox. 
So let's go get a checkbox out of the common controls. Double click it onto the form. No, I don't want it there. Move this picture is over just a little bit. So this checkbox, I'm going to go up to its name property. It's called checkbox one. Let's call it, I'm going to call it show, show checkbox. And I'm going to change its text property to be show pictures. So when this is checked, we want this picture box to show. When it's unchecked, we want the picture box not to show. Okay. Now, because when the program starts, we want the picture box to be showing, I'm going to ch change its checked property for the checkbox to true. Now, let's write some code. I'm going to double click on this checkbox, and my picture box is called display picture box dot visible is the property we want to look at equals now here's the cool part show checkbox dot checked so the checked property of a checkbox is true false if it's checked this is going to be true if the user unchecks it it's going to be false okay the visible property if the visible property is set to true you can see it. If the visible property is set to false, you can't. So when the user turns off the checkbox, checked is going to be false. We're going to put a false into visible. Remember, the equal operator is the assignment operator. It means take whatever is on this side and put it into here. So we're going to take this, the value of this property, which is going to be true or false, and we're going to put it into visible. So visible is going to get to set to true or false. So let's run the program and see what happens. So drum roll. Oh, my picture box went away. Click on it again, comes back. I can switch between my pictures. So this is how you work with picture boxes early in Visual Basic. Uh, the lab number two is going to have you do this. So I wanted to show you how to do this. Now, also want to review. I showed you how to unzip an example. Let me review and show you how to turn in a program again. So first of all, I'm going to say save all. You never do save as. You never do save or save as because that will save part of your program somewhere else and mess up your folder. So we're going to do save all. I'm going to exit out of Visual Studio. I'm going to go back to my folder here. So here's my top level folder for my project. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say send to compressed folder. So now you see I have chapter 2.zip and it says compressed. This is what I have to turn into Blackboard because that is my entire project. So then I would go back to Blackboard and I would go to not chapter 2 examples but I would go down to Lab 2 and click right on the title. I'd say Browse My Computer to find my project, which is in Desktop, ITSE, Chapter 2, drill down. There's the Chapter 2 zip. I say Open. Now I've attached it. I have to hit Submit to send that to Blackboard for grading. I'm not actually going to do that. I'm going to hit cancel, but that is how you work with pictures.